Hey guys, what's up? It's D-War, and I just got done watching SummerSlam, and all in all, it was a pretty good pay-per-view, but one thing I think they did wrong was they did not capitalize on opportunities as well as they could have. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a match-by-match -match review, and I'm going to start with the opening contest, Sheamus versus Randy Orton. Although it was a pretty good, exciting match, the only thing was the finish was kind of like incomplete, I thought, because Sheamus kind of got up from an RKO and then just hit him with two brogue kicks and it was over, so... Pretty good match, but I thought the finish was a little incomplete, like I said. Now, the four-way tag. That was really exciting. A lot of high-flying action. Everybody got their spots. And then, what I did like was they had that controversial finish where Kofi tagged himself in unknowingly to everyone. And he ended up getting the pin after pushing Titus O'Neil out of the ring. So, I did like that. I thought that was a good little touch to it. So, that was a pretty good match. The New Day are your new tag team champs. And Rusev Ziggler, I thought that was another good match, but the ending I did not like. The double count out I thought was just, I did not like that. I think they could have done a lot more with that. But then Amel and Neville versus Stardust and Barrett. That was a pretty good tag team match, especially considering Stephen Amel probably has little to no wrestling experience other than like the past couple weeks he's probably gotten some. But I thought he did a good job as well as everybody else in that match, and I have nothing to say negative about that match. And the Triple Threat Intercontinental title match between Big Show, Ryback, and The Miz. I thought that was a pretty good match. I mean, it wasn't great or anything, but I thought it was pretty good. And no complaints about that one. The finish was pretty good, so that was a good match. Ryback retains the title. Then Reigns and Ambrose versus the Wyatt family. I thought that was another good match. The only thing I have to say is they did botch a couple of spots that I noticed. But it was nothing too big, nothing that's going to end up on Botchmania. And I did enjoy the match, so it was a pretty good match as well. Wow. The Shield former members, Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose, getting the win there. And Cena and Rollins for the WWE and United States Championship. This match, I thought the match itself was really exciting, really good back and forth action. The two things are, it's timing. It, was not, it wasn't the main event. It wasn't even the second to last contest. It was the fourth to last contest. They had the Divas match and the Cesaro versus Rusev match, or Kevin Owens match before that. I did not understand that, or after that. And Jon Stewart hitting Cena with the chair, that was terrible. I hated that ending. Yeah, but they the match itself was very good, but I hated the ending. Rollins retains the title with Jon Stewart's help. And PCB versus Team Bella versus Bad, Team Bad. I mean, really, the match was pretty good. But a good ending, nothing really to say there. There's a good match, some good spots, but nothing special. Owen Cesaro, pretty much the same thing. Pretty good match, a good finish, but nothing special. So both those matches. Um, PCB getting the win in the Divas match, and Owens getting the win in the one-on-one -on -one match. And then Undertaker and Lesnar. Undertaker-Lesnar was a pretty decent match, especially considering how old the Undertaker's getting. But it wasn't, it was pretty much your basic Undertaker Lesnar match, what you would expect from any Undertaker match, really. About three F5s to Undertaker, kicks out of all of them, gives everything he has to Lesnar, Lesnar kicks out everything. Lesnar F5, Taker through a table. But what, hap what happened was the ending. So Lesnar had Taker in the Kimura Clutch or whatever that's called, and Taker tapped, and the timekeeper called, um, rang the bell, but the ref didn't see it, and there was a big confusion. And then Taker snuck up from behind Lesnar. And put him in Hell's Gate. And then the big thing is right here. And you see right here, Brock Lesnar gave The Undertaker the middle finger. And with the PG era, you never see that. So I'm wondering if that was unplanned, if Lesnar's going to get in trouble for it, or if that was part of the script. But yeah, but anyway, The Undertaker ended up winning that match after Brock Lesnar passed out in the Hell's Gate. And he was victorious, but then Paul Heyman grabbed him. A microphone and claimed that Brock Lesnar was the winner and they walked down the ramp with Lesnar's music playing so kind of an interesting end to SummerSlam but all in all I thought it was a pretty good pay-per-view and out of five stars I would probably give it a four it very easily in my opinion could have been a five star show except for the incomplete matches they didn't finish with the matches I thought but anyway a very good show better than a lot of other shows I think they've had lately and, but anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave that like button. And if you have any suggestions, you can leave that down below in the comments. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.